Hi guys, this is the last installment of our uh, lessons on making a game in C-sharp. What I want to do first of all is talk about the front screen here as a continuation from uh, part 4a. We've got three timers along the bottom. The first timer, timer game is set to 60,000 which means 60 seconds and in 60 seconds that timer will wake up. So it only wakes up once and it basically turns off all the timers and the game is over. Let's take a look at the other timers. The timer of the dribbler, that's the one that cycles through the images of the person you have along the bottom. This, this timer here is your main timer. That's where the game is. Now this timer is asleep at the beginning. Okay, So you'll notice here timer balls is set to false for enabled and the interval is 100. When I press the start button, that will wake up all the timers. Okay, and they're down here. That'll wake them all up. But not only that, they'll do a couple of other things that are crucial to your game. I set a flag to true, which you'll see in a second where I use that. But this is the first key thing. You're going to have, in my game anyway, four objects dropping from the sky. And initially, I set the position of the Y, that's how high they are, off the screen. So negative ball size means that they're going to be above the top of the screen. So you won't even see them and I set the random speed that they're going to drop at to a number between 3 and 6. Okay, so they're all going to drop at different speeds. And now I start my game. Now the game, for the most part, like I said, is in this timerballs.tick uh, routine. And basically, what I do is, first of all, I always draw the background that wipes out whatever was there, and it redraws it. Then I, I start a loop that goes from 1 to 4, and it starts dropping the balls from the sky. If you had 400 things dropping from the sky, this would still be the same size. That's the beauty of having a race. Okay, so this is how you make one of the balls, ball square bracket one, drop from the sky. And if its speed was three, it's gonna go down by threes all the way down. Now, when we get to near the top of the person's head and we have to figure out the collision, Here's what we do. All right, so what happens is when it reaches the top of the person's head, and this is how you figure out the top of the person's head, this is the position of the ball, plus how big the object is that you're dropping. Okay, so that'll get you to the top. And this is the top of the person's head. Okay, this is the size of the whole panel you're playing the game. Take away how tall the person is, and you've reached the top of his head. And that's the only time we have to wake up to see if there's a collision. All right, before then, we don't care. Next thing you have to worry about is I've made the assumption that the object that's dropping from the sky is wider than the object that's going to hit it at the bottom, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, are you farther left than the man I'm trying to hit? And this line says, are you farther right than the man I'm trying to hit? Because if you are, you're sort of like you've captured the person and he's squished in between the two sides of the object you're dropping from the sky. So when you guys make your game, make your objects bigger than the person that's going to try to catch them or hit them. Now, if those two conditions are true, you hit the guy in the head. You make your sound, make a better one than that, use a proper sound effect. You give the guy some points. You might want to do some if statements here. You want to have different points maybe for different speeds. It would make it a better game. And then you take that ball and you make it disappear you move the position of the ball off screen to negative territory again. And then again, you pick a new random number. Now, another thing that could happen as you drop the balls from the sky, what if they hit to the bottom of the ground? All right, then make them go off screen and pick another speed also. And of course, don't forget, you always have to redraw your man that's moving back and forth across the screen and draw the particular sign you're dropping from the sky. Okay, so this is actually storing the actual image of the sign. Okay, all this other stuff, ball Y and ball X, those are just the positions. Okay, this is the actual picture, and if you forgot where that picture loaded in, in form load, all right, that's where you loaded in the image. Here is the game in action, as bad or as good as it looks. Okay, so you have the objects dropping from the sky. Some of them are coming down a bit faster, some of them a bit slower. And when they hit the person in the head, he gets a certain point. And you can move, obviously, the person left and right. So that's the basic game. And you see the, t the counter keeping track of the hits. Now, on your game, you're going to have a drop-down counter that's going to count all the way to zero.